Hello everyone, this is Christina, and this is Drawing for Everyone, because I think everyone can draw. I think the important thing about drawing is first really learning how to see. Pick an object you really like, and then spend some time studying it, examining it, and understanding its shapes and proportions. And these exercises will get you started in how to train to see. So the tools are simple pencil sharpener if you're using a pencil, and experiment with the kinds of pens that you may like, and eraser. Please, no eraser for these exercises. They're exercises in seeing, and you can't make a mistake with that. I love paper, and I have a lot of different kinds of paper. I have the very basic recycled sketchbook pads of paper, lovely Italian, smooth European notebooks. And it would be good to have books of different sizes, little ones and very big ones. It's good to push yourself to draw a large format. But for this exercise, I suggest we use the back of envelopes. I love drawing on the backs of envelopes, and particularly for these exercises, you want to use something that you don't feel like you're going to waste, and then it keeps you freer. So I always have a stash of envelopes and scrap paper, and that's what I like to do these exercises on. It will be on these envelope backs that you will make your mark. Are these marks something that were drilled into you when you were in school? Are they things that come from your imagination? Are they things that you see that you put onto paper? The important thing is to have no fear and have fun, for this is not the final drawing in our exercises that's important, but the process. So now a word on where to draw. I love drawing outside, but depending on the time of day, you'll see there'll be very hard shadows, and these shadows will act as a separate element. So for these exercises, please don't go anywhere where there's going to be a very strong sun. So this is exercise one, drawing the outline. We're really concerned with just the silhouette of the object that you have picked, so pick something simple. I'm starting off with this jar. I start at the end, and using my eye, I just follow around the contours of this jar. The lip, the little bumps, the ridges, the side. And forget that it's a jar. Pretend you're a little ant crawling around the perimeter of this object. So you're training your eye to flatten something 3D onto something 2D. Voila. Pick simple things like this little toy. I'm not concerned that it's a man. I'm going to ignore his little fishing pole. I'm a little ant and I'm just walking around the silhouette of this figure. That's my eye that looks at it and then I'm going to scale it onto this sheet of paper and just draw the outline like I was a little ant walking around. So this is a whale, but I don't want to think of it as a whale, so I've turned it upside down. I'm just a little ant. My eye is marching around the contour of this object. Oop, little loop-de-loop. -loop. And now I'm going to transpose that 3D object onto a smaller piece of paper, so I scale it down mentally. Your first line is your fifth because you're counting the sides of the paper one two three four sides now i'm using this whelk shell with my eye and i'm going fast because i just want you to see this and then you have to do the work find something that you like and do exactly this and then sometimes you don't have to stay on the page like with this case i scaled it as well as i could but when it came to drawing, poop, I did go off the page. And that's okay. <laughs> Just keep on continuing. So you want to keep the proportion correct. More, more important is the proportion than staying on that page, which is arbitrary. And then you can use anything. So I'm right now outlining the little tugboat toy. But forget it's a toy. Just look at it just as the shape. And then you can take string and make funny shapes with the string. All right, now I've gone to the whistle. The, the object that looks like a whistle, just trace around it. 
Use your eye first. Go to the piece of paper, scale it. String, wire, I like doing shapes and figures with that because it's a little bit more abstract and trains your eye to think proportionally so that you end up where you began. And then you can do the inside spaces, the negative space. So these are going fast because they're just to show you how to be free. And that's why you want to do them on the backs of envelopes. <laughs> you don't want to keep these. You're just training your eyes. They're like scales or arpeggios. I found this beautiful branch while I was walking. And it's a drawing by itself, a beautiful 3D drawing. So on your walk, or maybe if you have something beautiful at home, you just kind of turn it around and look at it and examine the negative spaces. Just see where pieces touch. Look at the beautiful shapes around the cones. And you kind of have to forget that it's a branch. Think of it as just shapes, negative shapes. If you were a little ant, just walk around the outside of it. So I am drawing what I see. It's not quite what the camera sees. And now I've gone beyond just walking around the perimeter as the ant would, as you can see. I'm just crisscrossing because the branches are. So I'm going right over the drawing. And you can just play with it also when you're drawing. So look around you and see what is in front of you and draw it. But the way to get good at drawing is to just keep on drawing. Look at the very sensuous swoops and what touches, what doesn't touch. We'll deal with texture, color, light, and shadow later. But for now, just look at shapes. Pretend you're that ant. Some things are complicated, but then zoom in on something small. You're a little ant marching around the outside of it, outside of the object. These are just examples of what you might have around in your house, in your apartment. And you can zoom in really, really, really close and then just play. And that's why we use the backs of envelopes. There are little scales and arpeggios. They're nothing you really kind of want to keep. Focus on the outlines, the silhouette, the negative spaces, the shapes, and the forms, and just keep drawing. And in some of the future classes, we will deal with light and texture and shadow. Thank you.